What's up, guys? Uh, thank you for joining us on My Story Matters this Monday. Uh, I'm Ezekiel Talavera. I'm your outreach chaplain. Um, and you're going to get to know my story today. It's not easy to tell this. It never is. Um, I've really never told anybody. Um, probably besides two or three people. But now since having this retreat last time, a lot of kind of a lot of people know, but you guys are going to get to know. So again, my name's Ezekiel Talavera. Um I was uh born well, I'm from Londo, California. Um around the Inglewood area for those of you who don't know where that's at. Um, my home church is Mission Ebenezer Family Church in Carson, California, and right now I'm serving at Authentic here out of Needham Chapel, so if you want to come 10 a.m. on Sundays. Okay, I'm just trying to waste time. Man, okay, so I'm going to start back with the home. My dad is a pastor, so I'm a PK. Uh, grew up in the church, grew up in the old uh, Pentecost, old Hispanic Pentecostal church. Uh, you know, you know, that kind of, oh, that old school. And I was your typical pastor kid. Um, if you had siblings, then, you know, you got into fights a lot with your siblings. Uh, my brother and I would get into a lot of fist fights at church. Um, but in class, we were always the perfect kids. We were, uh, the first to answer questions, uh, in uh, Sunday school. Uh, we we're first to remember the memory verse and get the candy. And, you know, we were just always... Just being, just being, the pastor's kids. We were, we were Pastor Frank's kids. That's my dad's name. Um, so it's just a little bit about me. Uh, that's uh, my childhood, basically. We went to church because really was forced to. Um, never really had back as a kid. Never really had the desire. It was always a chore. But now to delight, obviously. I would say the real story starts in high school. I got there freshman year. I went to Miracosta High School in Manhattan Beach, California. Uh, was my mom put us there uh, rather than uh, Lawndale High School, which would have been our home high school because uh, the education uh, for Sentinella Valley School District wasn't was you know suck. So she wanted us to have a good education. So we, she pulled us out of our element where uh, we come really, our city's really like a giant melting pot into a predominantly white school. And there it was like just a complete difference. Um, as you can tell, I am straight Hispanic, I'm Mexicano. Mexican and Guatemalan in the shows and here all these kids making fun of me for uh, the way I speak uh, for the way I dressed and some of my mannerisms so really didn't have any friends in high school I was very shy that may come as a surprise to you but I used to not talk to anybody I always kept to myself so really just walked through high school alone and it, it sucked, it hurt. Mm. That's where uh, a lot of the thing, a lot of influences uh, started coming into my life, started hitting me like a truck. Uh, drugs, alcohol, uh, pornography. Um, what else I mean? So yeah, every... Every drug you can think of, I, I've probably done it. Probably every party drug you can think of, I've probably done it. Uh, used to drink at high school when the bad kids would sneak it in. Uh, sometimes I'd use my lunch money to buy a pot. You know, the ganja. <clears throat> and 
and uh, faced a lot of uh, just a lot of drain draining in my life. Uh, everything that was happening was spiritually draining, emotionally draining, mentally draining, and physically draining. Um, and I got mad at God. I got really mad at God to the point where I've even cussed him out before. Um, like, God, why the heck is this happening to me? Aren't I a pastor's kid? Aren't you supposed to be protecting me? Aren't I a special one? But the devil holds no, you know, holds nothing back from anybody. So all, you know, no holds bar. What else? Um, yeah, and then still going to church at the time because obviously I'm still under my parents. Couldn't be independent. Didn't have a job, no nothing. So uh, I was going to church, still being pastor's kid, being the perfect kid. Um, and uh, politics played a lot, especially in the Hispanic uh, church. Uh, we always had to behave properly because uh, if not, we would look, make our dad look bad. I have two siblings, by the way. Uh, my older brother, Frankie, he's junior. And then my oldest sister, Melinda, who some of you may have for as your, as your biology lab professor. She's awesome. Kind of. um, so we were being the pastor's kids, being perfect. Uh, we couldn't do whatever we wanted again. We had to save face for my dad. We were expected to help at church. Um, it was, it was more like a voluntold thing rather than a volunteer and out of the desires of our hearts. Um, I was, I was, I went, okay, here we go. I was in my youth group. I was in the youth worship team playing acoustic guitar. And worst experience of my life. Not because of them. But because of what I was doing in the background, behind the scenes, behind closed doors. I was watching porn, smoking, or taking Xanax, whatever. And just uh, living life. Wasn't depressed. I, I would say I, I thank the Lord for that because you know I I never never been depressed. Um, but just very lonely. Those people weren't really my friends. They were more like acquaintances. I don't even talk to any of people in high school now. It also affected my grades in high school. I just got lazy. Never wanted to do anything. Uh, barely graduated high school. Uh, all these. Not the. Not the proudest moment of my life. It's, it sucked. It really sucked. Knowing that I was on the verge of not graduating, but you know, barely pulling through. By the skin of my teeth. That's how. That's how close I was to not graduating. <sighs> Then when I went and got out of high school, started uh, at El Camino College. It's a community college down in uh, Torrance, California. And I was I, I was going in because my mom said, as long as you're in school, you can stay at my house. So, you know, I just stayed in school. Um, again, was not focused on the right things, doing everything wrong that I could have been doing. Then I got a job at KFC. Yes, I work at Kentucky. I used to work at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, and within five months, I got a manager position. First job. Learned everything on my own. And, 
that's when it started getting bad. Um, so since I would close, oh, I dropped out of, I dropped out of college, dropped out and just focused on work because that was uh, something I was actually good at. Uh, hated the job, had a lot of, uh, confrontations. Um, at this point I was very angry in my life. So any, you know, person, like there was one person who came up one time, it was my first day and I swear he looked like the guy who played Easy E on uh, NWA's movie, Straight Outta Compton. And I'm looking at him like, man, he looked like the dude from he looked like Easy E. And so this dude was a was a, was a uh, gang gangster, and he was like, "Yo, what's up, homie? You got a problem?" And fight mood came on. And that's how quick it was for me to get angry. Um, so had a credit card scanner, you know, you put your card in there, yeah, some guy ripped it off and threw it at me. I've had many confrontations, crackheads in my bathroom, I was smoking crack and then flushing the lot. So it was brought to my attention. Um, and then just rowdy customers who would piss me off. And a couple I almost got in fights with. Um... But when I became man- became one of the managers, it would be I would close a lot. I would be the one closing. I was in charge. Uh, I was the one who was able to lock up the key and, and lock up the door and put the security code in and check the safe in the bank. Did it steal? No, no, I never stole. Never stole money. Never. But would get even though I was I was just eighteen, I'd get my cook to. Uh, by uh the homies and I alcohol. I used to work with the homies and uh we used to get alcohol and we used to be smart about it. So we had a trash can area where there were no cameras. And uh we'd put it we'd put it in the back, we'd put it in the we'd get the big old buckets, fill it up with the ice from the ice machine in the back and then stick them in there and then put it out in the trash can area so it would stay cold the whole shift. And afterwards, we would uh, just drink. And this went on for uh, for a good year. Good year. Um, and it got to the point uh, where one time uh, I got so drunk that the homie pulled out uh, dollar bills, folded up crisply and nicely. Folded, packed tight. And we were just gone. And then they were like, hey, we need to go home. We need to go home. So it's like one o'clock in the morning. We need to go home. I was like, all right, hey, give me like two hours. Give me like two hours and then I'll be able to take us home. They're like, nah, dude, we need to go right now. Because we got to work our other jobs. I was like, dang. So they took it out and folded it. And uh, it was a uh, crystal meth. Uh, so I've taken crystal meth before. It hurts. Don't ever try it. Please don't ever try it. That thing is like pre-workout on steroids. It is terrible and it tastes disgusting and it hurts going down. So I just... (sighs) Boom. Had the energy to drive home. Drove us home. Got to my house. Uh, Couldn't go to bed. Because again, like pre-workout on... Like major steroids. And this didn't happen just once. It's happened a couple times. So. And again, I was still at church. Actually, no. At this point, I was using work as an excuse to get out of, from church, from going to church. 
I left church for uh, a good two years. I used work as an excuse. I was like, oh, they got me scheduled on Sunday. Oh, they got me scheduled on Wednesdays. Can't go. Oh, we're having an event. We're having a harvest festival. You know, where they, uh, like for Halloween, the church Halloween truck or treat. Um, I'd miss that. Uh, our youth would go to youth conventions. Uh, shout out Southern Pacific Youth District Ministries. Come on. So I would miss that when they would ask me to be one of the leaders. So I was, again, living life. And the times I would go to church, there I am already again, stepping into my perfect son role. Mm. It was so draining. I was exhausted all the time. I didn't want to do anything. And I got like pretty hefty. Pretty pretty big. Like not the good way. I got wide around there. I got a big old yanta, big old tire around my stomach. Uh it was the heaviest I've been. It was two eighty. I was just not happy with the way I looked. Um would say I worked out, which I did, but like barely still had my strength but not not the physique um, and if you guys have ever seen me in the gym you know how serious I get about when I lift weights like I, 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 I even tell my mom mom when I'm in the gym do not call me text me unless it's an emer- absolute emergency don't mess with my time when I go in there I focus on myself I don't care about anybody around me if I look around it's because I'm alert of my surroundings but that's it so, so this went on for about two years, and my sister, um, well, my church uh, was doing this uh, young adults ministry uh, retreat. I forgot where it was at, but, uh, but we would, we would uh, fellowship with other churches. Or rather, at this time, they would fellowship with other churches and put on a young adult's retreat. And my sister's like, hey, Zeke, uh, it's called Authentic Retreat. Hey, Zeke, Authentic Retreat's coming up. You want to go? Frankie, again, my older brother, uh, is the only one that's ever been with me. Why don't you go with me? I was like, because I got to work. She's like, just ask for the days off. I was like, no, I got to work. She's like, please, just have to date out. I was like, all right. And granted, at this time, my, my boss, uh, my first boss was LaShonda Brown. Actually, you know what? Cut that part out. And for my first boss, she had gotten uh, a cancer, and she had to leave. So my other boss happened to be Christian. And she had, uh, she had said, yeah. So she was cool with this. She's like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And I got no problem with it. I was like, dope. I got work this weekend. Hallelujah. And something in me just switched. The exhaustion and the pain was just so bad that I was, I had to like, I was resisting, but I told my sister, yeah, I'll go. It's like, I am feeling tired. I'm exhausted. I'm I didn't tell her this, but this was what I was thinking at the time. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. It hurts. So, uh, again, I got to thank the Lord for my mom and dad. Though they, 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 it was not, it was forced. But thank the Lord that they just pressed and pressed on for Jesus just being in our, like teaching us about Jesus. Because two weeks prior to the retreat, I would come home from work. I would I would finish up all my closing duties and finish up my work and uh, go home right after. I'd take the homies home again, and we wouldn't do that. Um, and I'd just go home. And uh, I live across the street from this church. And they, they God bless them, because they let us use their parking. There's never any parking on my street. 
So I just parked in there. I parked in the parking lot. And I just pray. I was just praying. And I cried my heart out. I was like, Lord, I'm tired. I'm just, it hurts. I'm, I don't want to be like this anymore. And I don't want to be in your presence like this. Because I know it's not right. And then uh, I did this for about two weeks straight. Sought the Lord for two weeks. And I don't know why this prayer came to my mind, but it was uh, what Samuel had said when the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. And after the third time, Sam was like, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And after two weeks, we have gone to the retreat. And it was so much fun. It was so dope. Um, and at this point, I started my weight loss journey. I was 280 pounds. And uh, got there, did all the stuff. And we get to the second to last day. It was uh, Saturday. Obviously. It's a three day thing. So Saturday. Saturday night. There's this pastor who came. Who came to speak. And at the end of his sermon. I said. Was talking about surrendering it all. Surrenderance. And he said, are you willing to give it up? Give it everything, your career, your sport, anything that you love for God. If you are, stand up. And everyone, and per Christian culture, everybody stands up at the same time. But I remained sitting. I remained, I remained in my seat. I stayed sitting down. And so he got mad at everybody. He was like, no. I don't think you're hearing me. If you're ready to sit down, he like screamed at us. I'm like, man, chill out. Jeez. But I was pondering on the question. Um, then he asked it again. And only a couple people stood up the second time. But I was stayed in my seat sitting down still thinking about the question and then at the corner of my eye I see my sister stand up and you know prior to the retreat she you know she came here to Vanguard and her you know she was at Vanguard at the time you know um, and I was uh, working at KFC and she you know her her spirit her life with God was just in alignment her her spirit her, um, her life was in in alignment with his will. Everything she was getting blessed and like blessings on blessings on blessings. I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, just all good uh, testimonies. Oh yeah, the Lord's been doing this. Yeah, the Lord's been doing that. And I was like, what the heck are you standing up for? In my head, I was like, what are you standing up for? Your life is right with God. And she stood up and turned her head towards me and looked at me sitting down and mind you I'm looking at the ground and I see it out the corner of my eye and she walks over and I know this is God speaking through her because he knows how I respond he knows what I respond to and never has this ever come out of my sister's mouth not once, nothing, not even a hint. And she said, God said, the prayers of your mother and grandmother are no longer working for you. It's time for you to do something for me. And all of a sudden, something in my legs made me shoot up and stand up. And this heavy weight just came down on my shoulders. It felt like, if you, if you ever squatted, it felt like you're doing a, 
uh, one rep max and you and you get stuck on the ground and you get stuck at the bottom. That's what it felt like. But my but I was standing straight up. But that's what it felt like. Or for those of you who don't know, I guess I would explain it. Um, It's like carrying, it was like carrying a couch on your shoulders. You know, it was heavy. And you're trying to do it by yourself. That's what I I would explain it. Or if you ever tried standing up and your friend pushes you down, that's what it felt like. And... Had my friend not seen me, I fell to my. He made me fall to my knees. Like he put me on my knees. That's how. That's how. How strong that presence was. That weight was. And thank God my friend had seen me start falling. Cause if not, he moved some chairs out of my way. If not, I'd have knocked myself out and probably not. Probably be toothless. <laughs> I started having, then all of a sudden, my breath starts, my breathing starts to become, starts to turn into hyperventilating. I feel like I'm going to pass out. Well, for obvious reasons, because of hyperventilation, but, but I wasn't. And this happened for a cool, for a cool duration of time. And then another uh, sister from my church, Hermana, came over and she said, the Lord says he's going to use your story to inspire the youth time to do something for him it's your turn boom on my hands and knees on my face crying bawling my eyes out and the service had ended and there I gave my back life I gave my life back to the Lord. And then after service, uh my friend and I were sitting. And he asked me, Zeke, what did he talk what did he tell you? I said, Dog, he's called me into ministry. I said, man, I never even, I never even thought about that. I wanted to be a personal trainer or a physical therapist. But then I dropped out of college because I got discouraged because everyone else was doing it. And then I decided to set my sights on becoming a restaurant manager. So, later that Wednesday... My boss had given had given it to me, had given me that Wednesday off. And I was like, that's weird. My days off are usually Tuesdays and Fridays. No, sorry, Tuesdays and Thursdays. No, it was Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays. I was like, why is my schedule changed? Lady, don't be changing my schedule like that. You don't know if I have plans. But I didn't. And so that Wednesday, I went to our church's youth group. And my youth pastor, Pastor Kevin Nickerson, freaking awesome, loved the guy. Was, I forgot what the sermon was about. I think it was about being lukewarm. And at the end, he recited a, a verse from Matthew. And it said, just because you say, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean you're going to get into heaven. Now, it's not by works that you get into heaven. It's by faith alone. But faith without, as James says, faith without works is dead. So... Yes, so he recited it about three times, saying, Lord, Lord. Just because you say, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean you're going to get into heaven. And I was like, no freaking way. I said, I hear you, Lord. I said, I hear you, Lord. 
And after that, I was like, Pastor Kevin, can we talk? So we talked and I told him about everything that had happened. I said, Pastor, he called me into ministry. And so I started serving as a youth leader at The Rock. Not, not in San Diego. We have our own down in Carson, California. So there's no confusion. And I was serving for two years. It was great. And uh, I had gotten a new job. Down at Smashburger. I uh, became the manager there. Um, liked it. It was cool. It was a pretty cool job. I mean, I got to, I got to use the flat iron and cook my own, take my own food and cook my own stuff. So it's pretty neat. Um, and uh, yeah, the Lord was just blessing me. He's like, "Yo, here's this new job. Go ahead, man. Way better pay. I had I had like a seven dollar increase in my in my pay an hour. Woo, making good money. And at this time, within the six months, I remember I told you I was two eighty. In six months, I lost 80 pounds when I started focusing on the Lord. I lost 80 pounds in six months and got to 200 pounds. It was freaking awesome. The Lord was just blessing me. I'm like, Lord, thank you, Lord. And my sister had a conversation with me and said, hey, now that you've been called, what are you going to do about it? I said, what do you mean? She said, well, how are you going to get to there? I was like, I don't know. I can have my dad ordain me because my dad has the power to ordain. Or one of my, or Pastor Joshua, Pastor Isaac. She's like, why don't you go to Vanguard University? Because again, she's an alum here and a Bible professor. And a lot of my pastors uh, came here. So, I was like, nah, I can't, nah. I was like, yeah, good idea. I mean, but I don't know if I'm going to get in. She said, just apply. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'll apply. I'll start doing the paperwork. But I held off for three months or a couple months, we'll say. This is 2019. And... I had the spirit of fear and doubt entered my mind because I was thinking how in the H-E double hockey sticks are you going to get in? Bro, you barely graduated high school. You don't even like school. Bro, you're dumb. You're stupid. There's no way. Uh... And as, you know, as the days were going, I was talking to myself and one of my pastors, Pastor Dozier of Chekulam, um, awesome guy from Nigeria. Ooh, the Nigerians are big on education. So he got on my butt to, to apply. He told me to text him when I was done applying. I was like, all right, Pastor. All right. So I applied. And throughout the whole thing, I was like, dude. Why are you even doing this? There's no freaking way. There's no way. No way. But I just filled it out anyways. So I got a call from admissions and they're like, okay, we got your application. We're going to go through it. Who the how to do, you know. And I'm just thinking to myself, God, I'm not going to get in. I'm dumb. There's no way. Not with my grades. And that I dropped out of college? No way. No freaking way. And I remember feeling this sensation. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And he had taught me to say these seven words. One day I was coming home after work. I had opened. um, And I had gotten off. It was like about three o'clock and I'm driving home and I'm still doubting and fearing oh my gosh I'm not gonna get in dude there's no chance whatsoever you did it you did it cool but there's no chance of you getting in but then 
I just took this deep breath and it was the spirit. I was like, and he taught me to say these seven words. And I encourage you if you're ever feeling doubtful or fearful or sad or anxious or even depressed. So Lord, I trust you with my situation. And I said those seven words on my way home. And right when I got to my door at home, so it was a 714 number. I think that's what the admissions number is. I, think. I was like, 714, what the heck is this? I answered, I was like, hello? They're like, hi, Ezekiel? I was like, yeah, this is him. This is he. You know, my business voice. I was like, this is he. Um, she's like, hi, this is so-and-so from admissions. Um, we want to talk to you about something. I was like, wait. I was like, wait. So I put her on hold. I unlocked the door and, you know, went inside. And my sister happened to be home. And I put her on speaker. I put her on speaker. I put my phone on speaker. And I was like, go ahead. And she said, well, Ezekiel, we're glad to tell you we're happy to tell you you got accepted into vanguard university i was like no freaking way no freaking way it was a literal miracle that i got into vanguard university and also i should either be dead in jail again not even here because i went i drove home so many times drunk I had no regard for life. Not even my own. Not because I was depressed, but because I couldn't let my parents find out. And no one else find out. But again, she said, I was like, what? Are you serious? They're like, yeah, you got in. And my sister and I, I didn't, I didn't cry. I'm surprised too, because the big, the big thing about my dad and I, we're, we're, we're some big crybabies. Especially when it comes to Jesus. Um, and my sister and I were just celebrating. Yeah, heck yeah, got in. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Lord. And so, yeah, then from there, uh, after getting into Vanguard... Um, I came in as a 21 year old I'm 21 at this time and again I'm four years out of school so when I apply for FAFSA and everything I barely get any loans I barely get any financial aid because I was too old and I was like dang I can't get no scholarship Um, so we applied for the Parent PLUS loan. And again, a miracle because everything was, nothing was working. We were getting denied for every loan we were applying for. Wells Fargo, Discover, Chase. Um, what's that other one? Um, the one that does students. I start with the, uh, Sally Mae. Sally Mae, there we go. Sally Mae denied us. And yeah, then... Again, Lord. But the crazy thing is, is that even though the loan wasn't dispersed in any of my tuition, they still let me come to school. I have no idea how that even worked. All my classes should have been dropped, but they weren't. Again, only God. So we got the Parent Plus. We got approved for it. And we got the loan. And since then, I've been here. But my only plan here was to... Just come in and study and then leave. That's all I was coming here to do. And then uh, at the end of uh, freshman year, Professor Casares, Tommy Casares, uh, actually encouraged me. He was like, hey, Zeke. Hey, man, the chaplain position's opening up. I want you to apply. I was like, what? Me? I was like, what? Nah, man, my plan here is just to study and leave. I didn't even do student leadership in high school. What makes you think I'm going to do it here? And so I applied. 
didn't get it. Thank the Lord I didn't get it. Because at this time, I had, again, I lost 200 pounds. I'm sorry. I'm, I, was to, I was at 200 pounds. I was at 200 pounds. I lost 80 pounds. And that is a pretty, pretty, pretty solid physique. And I got prideful. And bitter as well. Because a friend of mine had gotten in the position. I was like, what the heck? Yeah, your chaplains get go through these too, go through this too. But thank the Lord he didn't let me. He, I was I was a, an apprentice last year, my sophomore year. And uh I was uh, Sam Sam Lucas, our head our lead chaplain's uh, apprentice, Team Tex Mex, come on baby. Um and so just going through and then the pandemic hit. Ugh. They go, all oh, my friends, all of them going out, all, all out, of, out of state or up in NorCal. And I'm going to drive all the way out there. And I don't have no money to fly out there. So, again, another lone year. But it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad. It wasn't as bad. Thank the Lord. The Lord guarded my heart during this year. And after taking a class with uh, Professor Dogstrom on... Uh, Pastor, what was it? Uh, soul care. Soul care. Learned about emotional health. And so, at this time, I was meeting with my mentor. And he's been such a blessing since freshman year. Again, another miracle from God. I wasn't even looking for a mentor. But he showed up. He's taking me under his wing. Pastor Rudy Paniagua. And... So I came to him and I was like, Pastor, Pastor Rudy, hey man, I just went through this class and you know, I'm emotionally unhealthy. And uh, next next year, I'm gonna be out, I'm gonna be outreach, I'm gonna be one of the chaplains, but I can't, I don't want to until we work on my emotional health. So we did and here I am today. I thank the Lord that I'm here, I'm alive and well, I can move my arms, I can move my legs. And you know what, even if I couldn't, I still have the I'd be able to speak his voice, speak his name freely. So I thank the Lord that I'm here today. It's it, I well, shouldn't be here, I shouldn't be here. But because the Lord called me, and I didn't feel called, I didn't feel called. The Lord called me, He told me, and I decided to say yes. And I'm here as your outreach chaplain today, wanting to pour into your lives. And not this ain't this isn't for a pity party. I don't want no pity party. I want you to know there's nothing you could do that it can offend God enough. <laughs> to not say it's okay, son, you're forgiven. There's nothing you can do. So that's why when you see me in chapel up in front, lifting my hands all the time and even dancing, it's because the Lord has freed me and saved me from my stupidity and my foolishness. Oh, so I have this wonderful pleasure this year of serving as your outreach chapter. And I want you guys to get to know me. I want to get to know you. Come say hi. I don't bite. Let's get to know each other. Let's go get some food or something. I love food. If you love carne asada fries, then you'll love going with me because that's all I get. So thank you for letting me tell my story. Those uh, painful as heck um, sucked for me, but I pray that this was in, this encourages you to seek the Lord deeper and to know that you can come back, and He'll say yes, and He'll say I forgive you. Just don't take advantage of it. Because it's not fun. And you make an enemy of God. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Love you. Yeah, that's it.